Welcome to another edition of David Bryant Reports. I am David Bryant. <laughs> um, did you get a chance to watch the Super Bowl a few days ago? If so, you joined, you realize, about 124 million other people creating the largest TV viewing audience in the history of television. So why did everybody tune in? Why did you tune in? Well, I, for many of us, it's to watch the game, right? Uh, for others, maybe to see the halftime show. I'm sure there were quite a few people who tuned in for some uh, Taylor Swift uh, sightings. But a lot of us, if we're honest, are, are tuning in to watch the commercials because they're specially made just for the Super Bowl. They're, they're creative, they're funny. We like to see some of our favorite Hollywood actors, how they show up in a commercial, what they do. But there was one commercial this year that was rather controversial. Maybe you saw it. It was called, He Gets Us. And uh, it stirred up a lot of uh, debate uh, long after the Super Bowl was over. Now, it was about how Jesus gets us. Um, how he cares for us. It showed people washing the feet of other people from different backgrounds, different races, different ethnicities, different lifestyles. People put together you wouldn't normally think would be together. And one person sitting, another person on their knees with water washing their feet in one way or another. And the whole idea was Jesus gets us. He comes, he wants to, to minister to us. He wants to love us. And we ought to love one another in the very same way. And I suppose, you know, that is an important message for our culture to hear, considering how the church is so often seen and, and Christ himself is so often seen in terms of how we project ourselves, of being cultural warriors, of, of battling even in, in, in a political arena uh, so that we, uh, we present a Jesus that the world doesn't really want much to do with. But the controversy was pretty great. Uh, those on the right said it, it promoted lifestyles and, or, you know, okayed lifestyles that were not appropriate. And those on the left said this was just a subtle form of promoting Christian nationalism. Houston Chronicle said this was a commercial hit with a big backlash. And, and so it was. CBN said it was, a, it was a commercial that sparked viral debate. And so it did. But I like what one columnist for the New York Times wrote about it someone who is actually an evangelical Christian and writes for the Times all the time. And he said that he was wondering if maybe the commercial wasn't so much for the, for the unbelievers in the audience, but for the Christians in the audience to remind us that Jesus wants us to love people and serve people and care for people and not debate them and fight with them and, and count them our enemies if they're not a part of our political party and so on that maybe God intended that commercial more for, for his people than he did for the unbelieving world around us. I thought that was a pretty good point. The fact of the matter is, it cost about $14 million just to air that one minute, let alone all the production costs. And so some people said, listen, we should have taken that money and used it to, to minister to the homeless and to the poor, to show the love of Jesus in that way, that that might have done a whole lot more to get people to, to believe that Jesus is who he claims to be. You know, there was a pastor in Ireland who within 24 hours of the Super Bowl took that commercial and redid it in one minute so that it looked exactly like the original. Same graphics, same uh same music score underneath, everything about it. But instead of it saying, he gets us, on the screen came the words, he saves us. And instead of showing people washing people's feet, he highlighted people who had been brought to salvation out of various backgrounds, various situations, delivered and rescued. And as Paul says, brought out of the domain of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. In other words, he put on King Jesus glasses, which is what I want us to do right now. And he looked at this thing in a whole other way. Because what that commercial was saying, and incidentally, he, he actually did it in one, uh, one hour, and then he put it up to share with his friends, and the He Saves Us <laughs> commercial has now gone viral. Over two million people have viewed it. And what he's saying basically is he gets us so well that he knows he needs to save us, that he needs to do for us more than just washing our feet, that the love that would make him wash our feet is the love that would take him to the cross. 
It's the love that would do for us what we could never do for ourselves. He saves us. And as I, as I looked at that second commercial, <laughs> if you want to call it that, it sort of made me think maybe we need a whole other campaign instead of the He Gets Us campaign, which is a campaign that has been going on for the last couple of years. We need to have a new campaign that precedes it called the We Get Him campaign. Because part of what's really the problem here is, as someone has said, you end up looking like who you look at. The Jesus that we are looking at as, as God's people may just be too small. He may not be the real Jesus, at least not the full Jesus. And that's why we end up not looking like him. We end up doing things and saying things and acting in ways that actually contradict him, that, that undermine his witness in our culture. Maybe the great need of the hour is for us to get him more fully. You know, here at Christ Now, we're talking about a, an American Christ awakening for this, this year, 2024. And that's really what we're talking about. God's people waking up to God's Son for all that he is. So much so that we begin to be transformed. And we start not only looking like him, but as someone else has said, you can only share what you have. We begin to have more of him to actually share with the world around us. Here at Christ Now, we say the spectacular supremacy of Christ can be summarized in seven major prepositions. Who he is to us and for us. Who he is over us and before us. Who he is within us and through us and upon us. The dimensions, the biblical dimensions of his spectacular supremacy. So maybe you could join me and let's start a new campaign. The he gets us campaign and the he saves us campaign preceded by the we get him campaign that's the great need of the hour that's the real hope for this nation well that's my report for today join me next time as we continue to look at the world around us through the spectacular supremacy of god's son i'll see you then